it's frankly racist for a majority of black city to not have control over its police department that that is enacting violence on the population in the way that it does. So our elected officials in Baltimore City our, and our city council don't have the ability to legislate our police force, which is under consent decree with our federal government. So um, we need the ability to hold our police accountable and we won't be able to hold our police accountable until we have local control. I'm Rob Farrell, I'm with Organizing Black and I'm in favor of local control of the Baltimore Police Department. So the Baltimore Police Department has had a history of unconstitutional stops, searches, and seizures of Baltimore citizens, mostly specifically targeting vulnerable populations. So Black folks, especially, our queer and trans community and our sex workers. Uh, they violate repeatedly the ADA when interacting with folks with mental health disabilities, and they interfere with our right to free speech, whether it's protests or just, you know, any everyday encounters. Baltimore City needs control of this police department because it's the only way that we can really bring true accountability to our police force. Right now, we don't have any ability to legislate our police force through our local elected officials like our city council. We have to go through Annapolis to get any departmental-wide policy changes implemented, which just doesn't make any sense because uh, we need statewide buy-in essentially from Maryland voters across the state that don't live in the city. Under the current arrangement, we don't have the ability to enact department-wide policies. We don't have the ability to uh, provide oversight for the implementation of our consent decree. And we don't have the ability to create public accountability and reduce uh, misconduct lawsuits that are brought against our police department. To get any real change to happen for our police department, we have to go through Annapolis. And there's a lot of structural barriers involved in that process. First of all, there's the time window, right? Uh, session only lasts about three months versus our city council, which basically meet and govern all year round. So you have this time crunch. And then you have the structural barriers about around transportation. How do we get uh, Baltimore citizens to get down to Annapolis within that time window to meet with legislators and testify? Um, it's just uh, virtually impossible. And, and we also through Annapolis, we have to lobby and get something passed through statewide officials versus just folks that live and legislate in Baltimore City. So it's just, is a massive structural barrier all the way around for us to, to make change. The last time Baltimore City had control of this police department was 159 years ago. And so for those that struggle with math, that's around the Civil War era, right? So the entire lifespan of our modern police department has been controlled by Annapolis. I think this is an important issue right now because we need to take advantage of the awareness, the level of awareness that there is throughout the populace based on the events of the summer of 2020 to, to, to really have change happen right now. Uh, there, there's pressure on our elected officials to act and we have to utilize that. Um, and obviously this is built on a legacy of disenfranchisement. This is built on a legacy of police brutality for decades and decades. Um, and we have a majority black city here in Baltimore. So we really need local control so that folks can contact their le elected officials, the folks that they elected, that they wanna hold responsible for these issues uh, to take care of it. And right now our city council members don't have the ability to enact these changes.